of course, now we've got more standardized, for want of a better word, aircraft, and certainly this phenomenon, if it, for, for want of a better word, is definitely the trend in the US where you've got Magni and Auto Gyro product uh, where they're all the same and a pilot operating handbook, which gives a number. I think we now need to start thinking about takeoffs as something that defines the distance required to, to, to clear 50 feet. So this graphic again comes from the UK CAA and what it shows is that this area here before the blue line is just the ground roll where everything's on the deck. Then this sort of uh, initial part of the takeoff would be traditionally what everybody would call the wheel balancing part. And then where the red gyrocopter is would be what everyone would know as the airspeed build up phase. And then finally we would climb, climb away and you normally climb away at VY or best rate of climb, which is broadly for most Magni and Auto Gyro products. It's about 60 miles an hour thereabout. Okay, so what goes wrong? Well, there's quite a lot that goes wrong, and I'm going to look at these in more detail, so I'm just going to rattle through the headings. We can over rotate, which is broadly what the Cavalon 915 did. We can suffer a blade flap, which is what the red Calidus did in England. Climb out behind the drag curve, which I think is what happened to our instructor and his students in the MT-03. You could run out of runway, uh, which is what the guy in Texas did and collected the trees. You can struggle with crosswinds. You can also lose your control, although, as I've said, normally loss of your control on takeoff is correlated with another problem. That's just the end result. Or you could have engine failure. Now, I know with Rotax 9 series engines, so 912, 914, and now 915, that's not as common as it used to be with old two strokes or Subaru powered RF 2000s, for example. And we tend to ignore failures, mechanical failures in 2020 because they don't, they don't often happen. Although clearly that could be something that goes wrong. And when we go back to our graphic of what we're trying to achieve, if we're going to be mindful of the fact that there could be a potential failure, trying to get airborne or trying to get as high as possible. I'm sharing these things with you, not to, if, if that guy is a friend of yours, it's not to be rude to him. You don't know what you don't know. And, uh, you know, he's maybe an early, early forays into gyroplane flight. But the point is, these are real problems. They're not me writing this PowerPoint presentation in a bunch of words and theorizing. There's the real problem. Now, the thing is, is that that pilot has got a license. So at some point, he's gone through a, a training program of some description and passed a flight test. But now he's in a Cavalon. I don't know whether he did his test in a Cavalon, and he's got problems. And at some point, th that goes that goes wrong, fr frankly. Okay, hang on. Here we go. Question in the chat. Can I talk you through that one again? What the the Cavalon nod in the chat, Chris? That let me know. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, Shall I do the video? Shall I put it back on the video again? Hang on. Let me just, let me go back to cover on not. Right. So in cockpit, obviously it's difficult really to see the movement of the aircraft. 
but I show you those videos because you get the out the outside and the inside. So this is what that American gyro, uh, that American Cavalon would have looked like from the outside, except probably a little bit more extreme. And what happens is, so we're, we're sat on the runway, we finish pre-rotating, we release the pre-rotator and the stick comes all the way back. So now we're running down the runway with the stick all the way back and the rotor RPM is building. And if we go back to our lift equation, that's techniques. And sadly, and I say the word sadly, because I think it fits perfectly. We at 2020 have gone through a real rocky, confused, muddled, call it what you will, can't find enough adjectives to describe the mess that is what we are doing with takeoff techniques. It is no wonder that people have problems with takeoffs. Now, I don't know particularly what is the common takeoff technique that you employ in the US, but I think it's probably similar to that in the UK, but I'll reflect what I know of the UK scene and I think some of it is migrating to the US. So, in the early days, all takeoffs in gyroplanes were done what, by what is commonly referred to as a wheel balance technique. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that when you start the ground roll, you've got the stick all the way back in your chest and you're accelerating down the runway with the stick all the way back and you're trying to establish the aircraft in this wheel balanced attitude and that will come once the rotors have got up to somewhere near flying speed once you've got to that attitude you would then if you haven't already got full power established you would then add full power and you would fly it off the runway so you'd be unstuck but not climbing out you'd hold the wheel you'd hold the airspeed build up attitude and you would you would climb away and the profile if i just go back to this profile would look very similar to this the only difference between what i've tried to express here and i'll we'll come on to it in a later slide and that wheel balance is the fact that here we're talking about a quantified distance to clear 50 feet which realistically in single seat terms is probably not necessarily wasn't the biggest focus simply because as i'd explained before the process to get to that point where you can unstick was less consistent uh, than it is today. So, I said it was muddled, and in the preview film where I was trying to encourage people to come and join us on this seminar, <clears throat> I said that there was a dangerous amount of deception from instructors. And I'll qualify that with this slide. This slide isn't one graphic it's actually a montage of techniques that have exist been ex been in existence and articulated since 2008 so we're not talking about since the invention of the sport gyrocopter in 1955 we're talking about modifications since 2008 and this is only slide one. I've got another slide. So let's go through them. This panel on the left is actually an extract, <clears throat> an actual extract from the AIB accident that happened to an MT-03 that crashed into the boundary fence uh, on an island in the UK. And conveniently, the AIB recorded this bit of data 